Welcome to the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions now in its 25th season. Our panel features a longtime Penn State media and Nitwits tag team, Neil Rudell of the Altoona Mirror and Mark Brennan of Lions 24-7 with Fight on State. Between them, they've covered Penn State for more than 80 years. The Nitwits are hosted by WTAJ's Anderley Penwell, and each week we welcome a former Nittany Lion as our special guest analyst. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we're a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Kogan Electric, lighting the way for you. By Novacare, Altoona and State College, the power of physical therapy. By Fullington Tours, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. Welcome to Nittany Nation Overtime. Hello, hello, and welcome to another edition of Nittany Nation Overtime. I'm Anderley Patnell, joined as always, Mark Brennan and Neil Ridzell, and our guest this week, Shane McGregor. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Yep. All right, we're, of course, talking Penn State Rutgers, the 55-10 to 10 win yesterday. Do you want to start on defense or on offense for this one? Why don't you guys go? You, this side of the panel was there. Yeah, I mean, I think Chilly. defense. Yeah, to me, I think it's it's the defense. You know, the offense didn't play particularly well early. Uh, Sean Clifford wasn't particularly sharp, but once again, he didn't make a bunch of mistakes. But the way that defense stepped up, uh, again, put in uh, bad situations several times, generally came through, you know, gave up a few points early in the game. But this guy, Abdul Carter, the job he's doing as a starter, uh, the pressure they're getting on quarterbacks, the stuff that Manny Diaz is doing, uh, has just been fantastic. When you look what they did against that running game, uh, again, you know, a couple, couple decent runs early, but then just completely shut it down. So this defense just continues to get better and better and better, and we're seeing so many different people making plays for the defense. Yeah, I mean, you had 15 tackles for loss. Yeah. These are unheard of numbers, 41 in the last three games. Now, I realize this hasn't been the meat of the schedule, but still, Penn State has really improved, and they're so deep. I mean, you take a kid like this, Marquise Wilson, who really has not been a starter his whole career. That was the fourth fumble that he's forced. Shows you a lot of talent on defense. Shane, what stood out to you about the defensive effort from what Manny was doing yesterday? Well, you love it. It's just complimentary football. You know, you get, you're, you're putting interesting spots, but you can make plays, which feeds into the special teams, making a big play early, uh, kind of stopping their momentum, whatever they had. And then the offense comes along finally, and then it all works together. Like complimentary football, that's, that's the way to win games and yeah. win them decisively. I'm, I'm sorry, Shane, but that's, yeah. it's taking complimentary football to a whole different level, though, when you're actually getting touchdowns mm -hmm. from yeah. the defense. I mean, and that's, you know, that when you look at the very best teams, that's what they're able to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see a guy like Kobe King who has been kind of that second team Mike linebacker. He's been getting more and more snaps the last few weeks, comes in, makes a big play. Uh, Marquise Wilson, Curtis Jacobs out for a week, strip sack. Tig comes in, picks up the football and scores. And then you get a special teams touchdown as well. So when you're talking complimentary, usually it's one setting up the other. And that happened to an extent. But this was just like the offense wasn't quite going. And, you know, you were looking at that game. The offense wasn't playing well at all, and they were up by, like, three touchdowns. 
Yeah, you know, I would take a little bit of exception on, um, on <laughs> you know, there's one game left at home, so I'm going to defend Clifford. <laughs> but I didn't think it was necessarily him early. That line, which had been really good the last mm -hmm. couple weeks, sprung a few leaks. Sure. And, I, I, you know, I gave up a couple sacks. Singleton fumbled. And mm -hmm. so it wasn't, it wasn't just Clifford. But, uh, you know, I agree as far as, you know, you had an offensive, a defense, or, I mean, you had – a special teams touchdown and three uh, three touchdowns that weren't part of the offense that hasn't happened in like 24 years. Yeah, when you factor, I'm sorry, Andrew, but when you factor in the the field goals and then the extra points, more than half of their points did yeah. not come from offense, and that's like that that's what the best teams are able to do. It's like that old Mark D'Antonio line. I think it was, "Well, boys, the offense isn't scoring tonight. It looks like so. Looks like we have to there to the you defense." Go. You know. So. And Neil, you mentioned missing pieces there. Quite a few: Parker Washington, No Olu, amongst others. People stopped up. There was a good receiving core effort there. And then, um, what do did we notice? Demonstrative gaps. Well, this speaks to their recruiting. I mean, you know, they're, you know, <laughs> I realized Kevon Lee had kind of been displaced. We got these two great freshman backs. You bring uh, Drew Shelton in, who generally has played well. You have a bevy of receivers Shane can talk about. Johnny Dixon made mm -hmm. it, should have had a pick six, really, uh, and he was in there for Porter. So the depth of this team and the number of young players that they've recruited, it's been really impressive. Well, and that's what separates them from Rutgers and Maryland. I mean, you're looking at a team that had two projected first-round draft picks, and Parker Washington, if he decides to go, would probably, probably be the next guy from Penn State drafted. I mean, so you're looking at two projected first-round draft picks not playing in that game, and Parker Washington, and you're still blowing out that team. And then Parker played the previous week, but you were, you were without Joey Porter Jr. and Olu, and you still blew out Maryland. It seems so simple, but it's... Better guys win football games. Shane, with the replacement, quote unquote, receivers, who stood out to you the most yesterday? Um, I'd say you had a couple guys who were doing doing pretty well. I mean, I don't know if anybody stuck out to me like just like big time. Actually, I like the collectiveness of it all, yeah. and that's the cool thing that you see. Like a lot of times when you're on the team, you see guys making plays in practice, and maybe they're not quite as good as that number one guy. But when they finally get a chance to shine, like you know, like yesterday, you know, on an actual game, stepping in for somebody, I mean, that's when you're like. Look, let's go. Like you're cheering for that guy to do it because you've seen it in practice all the time. Yeah, I thought it was cool that they were able to move Mitchell Tinsley into the slot because mm -hmm. that. And Shane, you would know this. He's usually an outside receiver, and that's not always the easiest thing to do. But he's a veteran guy, has played a lot of football, and to be able to put him there, then you could use some of the younger guys outside, and that's a little bit easier because that's complicated. If you're more yeah. experienced, yeah. you yeah. can help out younger guys being with your versatility and your knowledge acumen. Um, and also, you get a—I mean, they're different receiver slots. Like they're, right. we call them wide receiver, but they're pretty much different positions with yeah. the nuances and stuff like that. Yeah, Wallace played well. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought Tinsley stepped in and was a punt returner too, which is an important spot, especially mm -hmm. when it's you know, kind of windy. I, I'm curious, your statement, though, about Parker Washington being the next guy drafted if he would decide to go. I would say take, uh, you know, Jair yeah. Brown uh, might be a and little maybe ahead PJ, of him. Johnny maybe P.J. Mustafer. Possibly also. Yeah, I'm not sure about Dixon, <clears throat> but I think P.J. Mustafer right. might be in that mix, too. But my point being, he's Strange a, he's, if he comes he's a, out. He is a draftable guy, <laughs> right. and I don't know many teams that lose three draftable guys other than maybe Ohio State, which seems to lose five draftable guys every game and it's still <laughs> rolling. But it, it's a sign, Neil, that you're getting to that level. We could quibble over who's going to go when, but I think it's a sign of the depth and why Penn State's able to blow out these teams despite losing personnel. Well, hey, uh, uh, up until the beginning of this year, I think they were fifth or sixth in terms of NFL uh, players on rosters. And you guys were talking about complimentary Plenty football, which is one of James Franklin's <laughs> favorite phrases and big moment yesterday for Coach Franklin with his 100th win. To have that mile marker, 100 is obviously a big number, what does it mean for the program to have a coach, the leader, the face, a very public face, a big name in college football with that mark? Well, hey, you know, he's done a lot of things really well since he's been there. You know, one of them yesterday, too. I thought, you know, the, the emblems and the, on, the, on the helmets of Virginia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, Anthony Poindexter was on the plate of Virginia. was a great player. He's in the Hall of Fame. He was on the Virginia staff. But, you know, the players, I think, rep have represented themselves well. Yeah, obviously. You know, at some point he's going to have to get over the Ohio State thing and, you know, and beating Ohio State in, in, at all and then beating Michigan. Uh, and I realize they beat Ohio State once, but I think that's the next hurdle. But, 
you know, there's a lot of positives, I think, going on with the program, um, the recruiting and you know, the stability of it. Well, and to get to 100 starting at the previous institution, <laughs> yeah. uh, Vanderbilt, which, did, which per, you know, never won games before he got there, and then what he stepped into at Penn State. Neil makes a great point, though, in that, listen, you know, they seem to be on the rise going into the pandemic and for some reason didn't handle that particularly well, but it looks like they're back to where they were at least then, which isn't on par with Ohio State, but at least you're back kind of knocking on the door. All right, well, we have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll talk about the great freshman running back. Don't go anywhere. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Solani Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntingdon. And by McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back to Nittany Nation Overtime. We're discussing Penn State's 55 to 10 win over Rutgers. Sean Clifford on Saturday was 17 for 26 for 157 yards, threw a touchdown and rushed for one, but the running backs carried this one, Singleton and Allen. A couple touchdowns, a kickoff return, a whole package from the freshman backs. They've been the stars of this much improved run game all year. What about their performance yesterday was the most impressive? I think they're alternating them terrifically i mean you know you got two guys that are now have 700 yards each that's never happened in big 10 history for true freshmen for true yeah. freshmen yeah um i think they're just doing a really good job they complimented you know i thought maybe after uh, three or four games singleton had maybe hit a little bit of a wall but he is finishing strong and uh, allen has just been really terrific in space uh really complement each other well they're fun to watch yeah, Andrew Lee, you were there. Did you notice what Franklin called them after the game? Erasers? Yes. And you know, you know what he means by that? I mean, I think everybody does. The offensive line can make mistakes now, and these guys erase those mistakes. They can make guys miss kind of on their own, which they haven't had uh, maybe since Journey Brown. I mean, so, that, so uh, that's, that's impressive stuff. For the second straight week, last week it was Nick Singleton carrying a guy into the end zone. This week, Catron Allen has a 59-yard run or 53, whatever it was. That was impressive. But even more impressive, he gets the ball at the eight-yard line on the next play and carries a whole pile right. along with his offensive line. That's breaking a team's spirit. I mean, that is breaking a team's spirit with a running game. And it may already have been broken by that <laughs> point. But, I mean, that when you see a team being able to do that with two different running backs in two different weeks, it speaks to how well they're playing. And I, I was really impressed by the way the offensive line, after struggling a little bit early, came together and was able to really dominate as the game went along. We can pull up some of their stats in this one. Singleton and uh, Allen, of course, a pretty good pairing there. Like Neil said, you beat me to this one, Neil. Sorry. First true freshman duo in Big Ten history, each with 700 plus yards. Singleton's at 884 and Catron Allen's at 758. Uh, six and a half yards a carry and five and a half per carry for Allen and 19 combined touchdowns for the duo. So they really stand out. Um, but when you're young, trying to manage that, as a quarterback because post game I will add this post game were you at this part where Sean said they kept they ca right. kept coming over the sideline and demanding the ball so when you're trying to manage younger <laughs> running backs like that you want them to be six. eager that's for sure all right but um I think it's interesting how they kind of ride the hot hand a little bit it seems like and then they but they still use both um and I always come back to the fact more and more freshmen play early like nowadays that's the way college football is but these guys were playing against high school football players last year. They're playing high school football, and now they've made the jump to this, and not only having one, but two of them doing it successfully at a pretty like physically intensive position um, and doing all the other things that you have to do besides just running the football. You know, college football, much different than high school as far as like what goes into a successful running back with pass protection and everything like that. You still see some slip-ups like the fumble and stuff like that, but uh, to have two guys doing it and seemingly doing it like well together, getting along together as they do it, that's good. You know. I think you I have to give credit to Jay Wan Sider, too. Yeah. I mean, they're running backs yeah. coach. Uh, the job he's done recruiting, mm -hmm. number one, he's been able to get guys to come here. Even I mean, 
you know, people forget, but they, as recently as last year, they had four four-star running back recruits and they were still able to bring these kids in because they were ready to get after it and it turns out you know thank goodness that they did but he's done a nice job he's the one who's helping Franklin and uh, and, and Yursich juggle who to play when and I think they've done a really nice job I thought them. it was the receivers who always they're the ones that are always open on every <laughs> play shot, right? yeah. <laughs> and of course when we talk about freshmen there's the other freshman Drew Aller we saw him a little bit uh, we I was a little loud. intrigued with the QB sneak. He got nailed really hard on that one, I thought. But uh, overall, what do we think of, of Drew? Well, it's a little bit more the same. Man. They have their ideas. We have ours. But, <laughs> you know, I wondered at one point if he was on the trip. <laughs> Just because, uh, you know, you're protecting him. And, and then all of a sudden, he's running around exposed and taking real shots. But he's getting his feet wet. I thought he looked real good. He did get to play more with the first team uh, offensive line and some of the receivers. So uh, it, it has been successful in that regard. I thought he could have been a little bit earlier. I've thought that uh, for a lot of the games this year. But that's the way they're doing it. I'm with you on that one. Uh, Mark, with what um, James said after the post game yesterday with managing Aller, walk us through a little bit what you think that mindset is and – how do you think that's progressed at all throughout the season? Uh, well, I think we finally saw him, Neil mentioned it, that he actually got some snaps with the first team line. But I, I wonder if that would have happened, if not for all the injuries on the offensive line. Because when I asked James about it, I kind of couched the question that way, saying you finally got him some snaps with the first team line. I'm not sure he had any choice because they're so banged up on that first team offensive line that a guy like Juice Scruggs had to play even longer than he might ordinarily uh, have, have needed to. Uh, so, but the fact that he did get in there and get more snaps with the offensive, with the first team line, I think was good. Shane, I'm just wondering what you think, because you're the quarterback right. expert and would know more about than any of us. I mean, it's a different world. Even, there's like different portions of the game. There's the, the end of the game, blowout portion that yeah. like everything's decided. There's that middle of the game where it, things are pretty well in hand. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not quite the same as that front end. Here's, this is the game, you know, kind of a thing. So him not really getting that jump into that area of the game, uh, like so far this year, I mean, they made the decisions, that's what it is. Uh, but just seeing him out there, at least in doing well, I don't like the, I mean, slide, man, get down or something, because like, yeah. you are the future dog, you know, and, and I, love, I love the toughness, I love, he's a big, big person to bring down, that's for sure. Um, kind of like Josh Allen-ish in that, in that sense, but uh, you just want to make sure, you know, you're not helping anybody if you're not available, so. Well, what did he call him, yeah. Adderley? Do you remember? Lamar, uh, Lamar, yeah, yes. Lamar, Alar, <laughs> which I thought was pretty <laughs> funny. I don't he's, think yeah. people want him he's, running like Lamar. Yeah, he, you know uh, what though? He is more he's more athletic than you would think mm -hmm. with how big he is. But uh, again, uh, especially in that scenario, you know, I think if you're trying to win a game, you might want to you, you might not be as is afraid of putting a quarterback in a little bit of danger. But at that point, I, I, I'm, I'm with Shane. I don't think it makes much sense to, to be getting well, as long to as Lamar uh, running him. Tank yeah. Smith's in front of him. He's fine. Yeah. Hey. I still think they should have put you in the Ticket City Bowl and you would have brought hey. them back. That's Bradley's <laughs> fault. Who knows, man? <laughs> what is the one problem? He, uh, James keeps alluding to this, that they got to have juice in there, you know, for 61 minutes a game. Do they not have a backup center? Yeah, well, Nick Dawkins got banged up, and Hunter Norzad is another one of their backup centers, so you can't, you're going to be, you're going to be playing somebody, and, and that's a very, again, this is, Shane can speak to this better than any of us could. I think you just don't go out there and snap the ball, right? I mean, oh, no, no. I mean, yeah, right. Offensive line communication, like we're talking a lot of stuff that falls on that center, um, almost as an extension of the quarterback. And I don't know exactly what all they, they put on whose plate as far as that goes, especially with a young quarterback. You know, they keep on saying how much uh, Clifford does as far as that goes. Uh, so, right. you know, that's definitely an interesting, you know, dynamic right there, quarterback to center. Yeah, and that's where, Neil, they're, they're even trying to get Sal Warmly snaps. Mm -hmm. So that's not a place where you could just bring in a walk on. Uh, and have him play uh, early. Although there was a kid. Who was the kid way back when as a true freshman played? But regardless, in this instance, I don't think it's feasible for them okay. to do. I mean, keep in mind, all the situations you're talking about, you're up 30. No, no, but it's, it's, it's going into a situation where guys haven't played the position. Right. And that's a little bit different thing. It's like trying to put a running back at quarterback. That's, that, that could be difficult well, to do. Well, they've done that before. He's at Kentucky. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, on that note, Neil, we got to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll talk. How good are these Nittany Lions? Don't go anywhere. The Nitwits are being brought to you by REMAX Results Realty Group. Committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry. The answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, 
We're a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. And by Kogan Electric, lighting the way for you. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back to Nittany Nation <laughs> Overtime. So now that Penn State <coughs> is 9-2 on the year, how good are the Nittany Lions? Good, Jane. Push comes to shove, how good are they? I mean, there's that upper echelon of teams, you know, it seems like in college football, but you're right there, you know, and it seems like teams change as the season goes on, too. So this team is not the same team that played in Michigan. This team is not even the same team as a couple weeks ago in Ohio State, you know, and I'm not ready to put them up on that level, but, you know, you're pretty darn good if you're not up in that playoff level. I mean, I think you're talking about a legit team here pretty much-ish. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? You know, I think there's uh, the balance of power is, is spreading out a little bit more. It used to be Alabama and Georgia and, you know, Ohio State, but it seems like there's a little bit more parity. Penn State has been, you know, they were blown out by Michigan. They were right there against Ohio State. I want to see what happens in a bowl game. I, you know, it's kind of interesting. If they're in a New Year's Six, that would be great for advertising purposes. But if it's but, the Cotton Bowl, yeah. if it's the Cotton Bowl, you might not get the same opponent you'd get in the Citrus Bowl, yeah. which a lot of people may complain about. The one thing, Tennessee got blown out yesterday mm -hmm. uh, by South Carolina. But, hey, they beat beaten Alabama and LSU, too. Yeah, I'm, the other thing I would say about this team is after what it did the last couple of years following tough losses and just basically fell apart, <clears throat> you know, kudos to the coaching staff for keeping it together. That is not easy to do in this day and age because a lot of kids might just pack it in. A lot might say, listen, I'm going to go prepare for the draft. Uh, you know, I'm going to go seek NIL stuff other places. These guys haven't done it. I mean, they've mm -hmm. kept kind of grinding. And then I think if you look at it big picture wise, nobody's saying this team is as good as Michigan or Ohio State. Both of those, team beat, both of those teams beat Penn State fair and square. But look at what happened yesterday with, with yeah. both of those teams mm -hmm. struggling against inferior opponents. Mm -hmm. So Penn State is actually playing its best football of the year late in the year and taking care of business against the teams it's supposed to take care of. Is that good enough? No. I think everybody wants Penn State to be able to compete with the Ohio States of the world. But at least, it's as I said earlier, at least Penn State's back there knocking on the door. Getting hot at the right time is most important in all sports, particularly college football. we got to take a quick break, but when we come back, our nitwit of the week and a little bit of explanation that I need to do. <laughs> the nitwits are being brought to you by Fullington Tours, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Lions 24-7 with Fight On State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Here's a look at the nitwit of the week standings. Because I can't do math on the fly, unfortunately Mark and I tied, so it technically is a no winner, but next week we will have half balls in the category for that one. So Mark, uh, deepest apologies. It's okay. <laughs> You can open up with no, me. No, you're opening up. You're not making me <laughs> open okay. up after you're the one who okay. did it. Okay, sounds good. I think Penn State's going to win 41-14. past couple weeks, they've been putting up a significant number of points. Well, I, I, you know, the Michigan State defense has just been awful this year, and that sure looks like a team that, that isn't playing at its best. Uh, Penn State's been pretty good in these land-grant trophy games, so I will go Penn State big, Penn State 45-10. to 10. Okay, I'm trying to do the math on the fly. <laughs> Michigan no. State, I mean, hell, uh, you know, Suspended a lot of guys for their performance in that tunnel at Michigan. Um, I'm hoping they'll show up. Um, so I'll say Penn State 39, Michigan State 13. I'm going big time! Exclamation point! Uh, 50 ball again, 52-7. Wow. Ooh, nice. Big one. One of the biggest picks. We don't have picks. to worry about you landing on anybody. <laughs> biggest one, one of the biggest picks of the year. Thank you so much for hey, tuning in you, this Sean. week. Amen. We will be here next week with our wrap up of Michigan State. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. The Nitwits have been brought to you by 
Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Solani Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntingdon. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we're a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Kogan Electric, lighting the way for you. By NovaCare, Altoona and State College, we proudly support Penn State football. By Fullington Tours, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.